Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Decor Science. In this video, I am going to discuss about the oxygen and the bacterial growth mechanisms. Uh, generally, oxygen has a great impact on the bacterial growth and there are several types of bacteria are present which generally uh, show a variation in their growth uh, according to the present, uh, presence or absence of oxygen. So, in this video, we are going to discuss about the variation in the bacterial growth according to the uh, concentration of oxygen. So, let's talk about this. Uh, how, uh, so, let's talk about this that how uh, oxygen generally affects the growth of the bacteria. So, oxygen requirements of bacteria reflect the mechanism used by them to fulfill their energy requirements. So, uh, it generally means that there are uh, several types of bacteria are present in the uh, environment and some of them uh, utilize the, uh, different types of mechanism, uh, metabolism mechanism. So, generally uh, the bacteria which uses the oxygen for their uh, metabolism purpose are generally called as aerobic organisms. So, uh, if, uh, if they use oxygen, they are called as aerobic. If they don't use oxygen, they are called as anaerobic. So, by this pathways or by, uh, so generally, by this mechanism, uh, whether the uh, bacteria uh, utilizes the oxygen or not, uh, reflect their uh, energy requirement uh, mechanisms. Uh, so, for example, like almost all energy conserving metabolic processes involve ETC cycle. So, the organism or the bacteria which uses this uh, aerobic respiration are generally termed as aerobic organisms and the bacteria which generally uh, don't follow this mechanism are termed as anaerobic organisms. So, the, uh, in that, uh, so on the basis of the oxygen requirements, uh, bacteria are classified into different categories. Uh, first one that is the obligate aerobes, microaerophiles, facultative anaerobes, obligate anaerobes and the aerotolerant anaerobes. Uh, I'm not going to discuss about these uh, types in detail in this video. Generally, uh, in brief, we can say that obligate aerobes are nothing but the organisms which require, uh, which have the strict or the compulsion for the oxygen presence. For, uh, sorry. So, in general, we can talk about this that the obligate uh, aerobes are the organisms which generally grow in presence of oxygen only. They could not survive without oxygen. Then the microaerophiles, uh, microaerophiles are the organisms which survive in very uh, small amount of or the very small concentration of oxygen. They generally don't require the uh, high concentration of oxygen. Then the facultative anaerobes are the organisms which are versatile in nature, which can grow in presence of oxygen also and in absence of oxygen. Uh, in general, they are anaerobes. That means they don't require oxygen. But even if uh, the oxygen is present in the environment, they can uh, well survive in that environment. Uh, then after that, the obligate anaerobes. Obligate anaerobes are the organisms or the bacteria which generally uh, cannot survive the oxygen. Uh, that means the oxygen is toxic for them. Uh, uh, they get killed in the, uh, they get killed in aerobic environment. Then the aerotolerant anaerobes. So aerotolerant anaerobes are the bacteria which uh, you know tolerate the oxygen concentration or the presence of oxygen in the environment. Uh, for example, like uh, so uh, aerotolerant uh, anaerobes generally uh, they can tolerate oxygen. They don't utilize oxygen. That is the major difference between the facultative anaerobes and aerotolerant anaerobes. Faculty generally utilizes the oxygen if they are present in the oxygen environment, but the aerotolerant or uh, anaerobes they generally don't utilize oxygen, but they can tolerate, they can at least survive in presence of oxygen. Then the oxygen toxicity of obligate anaerobes and the survival mechanism of obligate anaerobes. So, this is the uh, main point of today's topic that is uh, here we are going to discuss about that how oxygen is toxic uh, for the obligate anaerob uh, anaerobic organisms and how uh, the obligate aerobic organisms can survive the in presence of oxygen. I mean like uh, if uh, obligatory anaerobic uh, bacteria get uh, killed by the oxygen, so how the aerobic bacteria can survive in presence of oxygen. So, oxygen is toxic for anaerobes, we know that. They do not use oxygen as a terminal electron acceptor. Uh, that is a part of the oxidative phosphorylation because in oxidative phosphorylation, the uh, organisms uses oxygen as a terminal electron acceptor, which further, and then this process further gives rise to the energy uh, molecule, that is the ATP molecules. But uh, generally, the anaerobic bacteria they don't use the oxygen as their terminal electron acceptor. Instead, they show the fermentation process and all, where they use generally the uh, either, either uh, another inorganic or organic molecules for as a uh, terminal electron acceptor. 
Obligate anaerobes cannot grow in presence of oxygen because they utilize the metabolic schemes built around enzymes that react with oxidants such as oxygen, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen peroxide. Enzymes and proteins can be inactivated when sensitivity groups can be oxidized. So uh, the overall meaning of this sentence is that the obligate anaerobes cannot grow in presence of oxygen because whatever type of metabolic schemes or the uh, mechanism they, uh, that they possess or the anaerobic cells possess, uh, those uh, you know those mechanisms or the schemes are very sensitive to oxidants. Oxidants are generally nothing but the uh, they are the uh, reagents which catalyzes the oxi uh, oxidation of the uh, certain species. So uh, generally, the anaerobic organisms have the metabolic uh, mechanism uh, which is sensitive to the oxidants and the example of oxidants is the hydrogen peroxide oxygen superoxide radical peroxide radical etc so uh, this sentence is very important just keep this thing in mind that the anaerobes have the metabol uh, metabolic uh, pathways which is sensitive to the oxidants uh, in uh, for this uh, then after that uh, enzymes and proteins can be inactivated when sensitivity groups can be oxidized so the enzymes and the proteins which are present in the anaerobes they can be get inactivated when uh, they are uh, when the uh, sensitive uh, when the sensitive groups which are present on uh, which are present in these enzymes and proteins they get oxidized because of these oxidants and because of this oxidation process generally these enzymes and proteins can in get inactivated and just because they are they get inactivated so they are unable to perform their respective functions and because of which the anaerobes cannot survive now let's talk about this uh, in, some, in some detail. Okay, so obligate anaerobes are not killed by gaseous oxygen but by highly reactive oxygen species. Now what is highly reactive oxygen species? So these toxic oxygen derivatives are formed when flavor protein transfer electron to oxygen called reactive oxygen species. So what happens? Uh, generally, when the anaerobic organisms, uh, you know, uh, take oxygen from the environment, so the flavor proteins which are generally present in cells, so this flavor protein transfers some electrons to this oxygen, uh, which the uh, bacteria has taken from the environment, and because of this extra electrons, the oxygen get converted into certain superoxide radicals, which are generally termed as the reactive oxygen species. So this reactive oxygen species can damage proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, etc. So generally, uh, what happens that obligate anaerobes they are not generally ki get killed by the oxy uh, gaseous oxygen uh, in general, but uh, when they utilizes this oxygen or uh, not utilizes, but when they take up this oxygen from the environment if they are present in the aerobic environment, so. Uh, the flavor protein which are already present in the cell they transfer certain electrons to this oxygen because of which this oxygen get converted into the radicals which are harmful for the cell because they damage the proteins uh, even the nucleic acid lipids certain types of enzymes and other the, uh, other cellular mechanisms of the cell because of which this anaerobic organisms cannot survive now let's see uh, what this reactive oxygen or examples of the reactive oxygen species so reactive oxygen species includes the superoxide hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl radical so these are the example of the reactive oxygen species so microorganisms must be able to protect themselves from this reactive oxygen species or they will be get killed now how they get killed so we'll see that further so here you can understand it easy this is oxygen uh, which the cell has taken up from the environment and here it is a one extra electron so this extra electron from the flavor proteins which are present in the cell and here it gives rise to one radical which is called as a superoxide radical which is harmful for the cell now if this superoxide radical gains one more electron and get converted into the peroxide radical which is also harmful for the cell and if this peroxide radical get combined with the hydrogen ions so they give rise to the hydrogen peroxide which is also harmful for the cell this hydrogen peroxide further uh, you know breaks down into water and hydroxyl radical so in this way if a bacteria uh, take up the oxygen from the environment so uh, because of this extra electrons which are from the flavor proteins or because of certain other mechanisms this oxygen gives rise to certain uh, important radicals uh, which are uh, nothing but the reactive oxygen species and this radical such as the superoxide peroxide hydrogen peroxide hydroxyl radical these radicals are nothing but the harmful for the cell 
uh, so this is how these radicals are harmful for the cell and because of the survival of the cell the uh, kind of a defense mechanism is important in this cell uh, which will protect the uh, damage of the cell from these harmful radicals so let's discuss about that so many microorganisms specially obligate aerobes possess the certain enzymes that protect against these toxic products so uh, now we see uh, now we have seen that the generally the uh, by utilization of the oxygen cells produces this type of uh, superoxide radicals so generally the uh, many types of microorganisms especially the aerobic organism possess the mechanism uh, where they include certain types of enzymes and these enzymes generally help them to fight against this type of toxic product so obligate aerobes and facultative anaerobes contain the enzymes so what type of enzymes they possess they possess the superoxide dismutase catalase and the peroxidase so what are their function superoxide dismutase and catalase catalyzes the destruction of superoxide and hydrogen uh, hydrogen peroxide radical so generally superoxide and uh, cat catalase both of them uh, generally carry out the destruction of the superoxide radical and the hydrogen peroxide radical here we have seen superoxide radical is this and this is the hydrogen peroxide so generally the superoxide dismutase and catalase carry out the destruction of the superoxide radical and hydrogen peroxide respectively peroxidase is also useful in neutralizing the hydrogen peroxide so for hydrogen peroxide there are two types of enzymes are present one is the catalase and second is the peroxidase so if we isolate any uh, bacteria or certain uh, organisms so we generally carry out the catalase test where we generally determine the presence of the catalase enzyme that whether the isolated bacteria produces the catalase enzyme or not and on the basis of that we determine that the isolated organism is aerobic or anaerobic so strict anaerobes lack these enzymes or have them in very low concentration and therefore cannot tolerate the oxygen while obligate aerobes possess this mechanism because of which they survive in presence of oxygen so uh, this point is very important so generally uh, strict anaerobes generally they lack this uh, enzyme system in their cells and uh, the obligate aerobes they generally possess this system so just because obligate aerobes possess these enzymes in their cell because of which uh, they are able to neutralize whatever reactive oxygen species are generating in their cell because of the uptake of oxygen so they are neutralizing those reactive oxygen species with the help of this uh, with the help of these enzymes but just because the strict anaerobes or the obligate anaerobes lack these enzymes or they are present in very low concentration i mean uh, the concentration of the enzymes are not sufficient to neutralize the uh, concentration of the uh, reactive oxygen species i mean the concentration of reactive oxygen oxygen species is much more greater than the concentration of the enzymes uh, so because of that the anaerobes are not able to survive in the oxygen environment so here you can see this is the superoxide radical and the superoxide dismutase generally catalyzes the destruction of the super uh, superoxide radical and uh, causes the formation of the hydrogen peroxide and the free oxygen gas then this hydrogen peroxide is then uh, you know break down into the uh, get break down into the water and the oxygen with the help of the catalase enzyme also peroxidase enzyme is also helpful for the destruction of the hydrogen peroxide see here you can uh, see the uh, you know uh, basic uh, comparison between the uh, anaerobic bacteria and the aerobic or the facultative bacteria so you will get the uh, you know a very clear cut idea about the mechanisms of their survival so here see in anaerobic bacteria they generally uh, use this oxygen from the environment they perform their metabolic functions and because of which generally because of the presence of oxygen during the metabolic processes they form the uh, certain products which are toxic for the cells such as the peroxide radical hydroxyl radical on uh, no, hydrogen peroxide and peroxidase radicals all and just because they don't have any detoxifying pathway such as the enzymes such as superoxide uh, uh, superoxide dismutase uh, here we see this is the mechanism to uh, neutralize this reactive oxygen species that is superoxide dismutase catalase uh, peroxidase etc so just because anaerobic bacteria lack this pathway they generally don't not able to neutralize this species and uh, this reactive uh, oxygen species then causes the destruction or the you know oxidation of certain enzymes proteins and the other uh, essential parts of the cells um, because of which the bacteria die 
whereas in uh, aerobic organism generally they use oxygen from the environment they perform their metabolic functions which also leads to the uh, formation of the reactive oxygen species which are toxic products in aerobic organisms also but generally the aerobic organisms or the facultative bacteria have the detoxifying pathway which includes enzymes such as superoxide dismutase catalase and peroxidase which generally neutralizes uh, neutralizes this reactive oxygen species and which uh, further gives rise to the non toxic products that is uh, sorry uh, here it is h2o not h2o2 just make a correction here uh, where they generally perform this uh, where they generally perform this uh, detoxifying pathways and form the non toxic products that is h2o uh, not h2o2 so this is uh, h2o not h2o2 uh, and the oxygen gap so these are the non toxic products uh, for the cell and uh, in that way the aerobic organisms can survive in presence of oxygen also but the anaerobic organisms cannot survive just because they lack this detoxifying pathway so that's it for today's video guys i hope you will like it and this video will be helpful for you to understand that how anaerobic bacteria survive in uh, cannot survive in presence of oxygen and how uh, aerobic bacteria tackle out with the toxicity of the oxygen so thank you so much